Wildlife, Wildlife Services, a branch of the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Services, or APHIS, of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, sounds like a useful government agency that helps wildlife. However, a deeper look reveals something much more sinister. The worst part is your tax dollars go to funding this agency that spends a great deal of its time killing native wildlife. A quick glance at their website shows how they prevent airplane strikes with birds, research wildlife behavior and conflict prevention techniques, and help farmers protect their crops. In their most recent strategic plan, Wildlife Services claims to focus on science-based wildlife damage management. Their official mission statement is to provide federal leadership and expertise in resolving wildlife conflicts to allow people and wildlife to coexist. Sounds great, doesn't it? Wildlife Services does do some of these things. The problem is though, Wildlife Services also uses your tax money to kill native wildlife using archaic means, including harmful chemicals. In 2018, the last year where data is available, Wildlife Services killed 14,100 animals in Wyoming, with 11,507 of those being native species. Some of the invasive species they killed were what they call feral cats and or wild feral free-ranging hybrid dogs. The death count is likely higher than what is reported, as some agency activities include gassing animals in dens to kill them where dead animals may not all be accounted for. Coyotes bear the most significant brunt of Wildlife Services' actions, with 6,349 coyotes losing their lives in 2018. One of the other species to be targeted by Wildlife Services are ravens, with more than 2,000 ravens losing their lives. Coyotes, ravens, and all the other wildlife targeted by Wildlife Services are intelligent animals with complex social structures just trying to survive and raise their young. Multiple studies have shown that killing coyotes doesn't work to prevent conflicts or protect deer species and can often make depredations on livestock worse if unoffending coyotes are killed and new inexperienced coyotes move in. Ravens have been killed to help boost sage grass populations even though displacement from their breeding legs from oil and gas development, livestock grazing, and loss of habitat is the real cause of their decline in Wyoming. Human-made structures like telephone poles and fences allow ravens new places to perch to predate on sage grouse. The human-made structures are the problems, not the ravens. Only 615 animals out of the 14,100 wildlife services caught were freed or released. Some of the methods they use to capture and kill animals are by firearm, M44 cyanide canister, gassing in dens, using foothold and body gripping traps, cage traps, a chemical that kills birds called DRC-1339, neck snares, pneumatics, shooting from aircraft, jab sticks, and foot snares. The agency uses words like removal, denning, and euthanized to describe what they do to animals. What all those words mean is to kill. Thanks to a lawsuit filed by some of our partners, Wildlife Services must complete an environmental assessment, or EA, that will guide how they handle wildlife conflicts in the future. An environmental assessment must be completed for any actions taken by government agencies that may impact the environment, habitat, or wildlife. Wildlife Services has been acting in Wyoming generally unregulated without an updated environmental assessment for many years. The EA is now available for review and comment prior to issuing a decision on the alternative to be selected and its associated environmental impacts. Comments are due on the EA by Tuesday, September 1st, 2020. There are four alternatives that have been proposed. The first alternative is to do nothing and carry on with business as usual. This will result in continued use of lethal means and tens of thousands of more dead wildlife in the future. The second alternative is for lethal predator damage management methods to be used by wildlife services only for corrective control. This alternative is similar to alternative one, the proposed action, no action, in that wildlife services would provide technical assistance, including both non-lethal and lethal recommendations, advice and information for others to implement. Under this alternative, Wildlife Services would still recommend lethal and non-lethal methods. Wildlife Services would also provide direct operational assistance to implement non-lethal and lethal predator damage management activities. This proposed action by Wildlife Services and the USDA is to implement an integrated approach using a variety of methods to reduce predator damage to agricultural resources, property, human health and safety, and natural resources. This alternative differs from alternative one in that Wildlife Services field personnel would not directly provide any lethal operational assistance for preventative control, even if contracted as an agent of Wyoming Game and Fish Department. Wildlife Services might recommend preventative lethal predator damage management, but cooperators would be dependent on contracting assistance from commercial companies, pilots with state aerial shooting permits, or Wyoming Game and Fish Department or their agents for their lethal predator damage management responses, or conduct the actions themselves. 
Under Alternative 3, Wildlife Services would provide both non-lethal and lethal technical assistance, similar to Alternatives 1 and 2. However, Wildlife Services would provide no operational assistance, including non-lethal and lethal methods. All operational predator damage management in Wyoming would be conducted by state or local government agencies, other federal agencies, or private entities. This would effectively preclude the use of certain methods, such as M44s on federal lands, because they are approved only for use by APHIS on federal lands. It would also limit the use of other methods, such as aerial predator damage management. This alternative would not be substantially different from Alternative 1, because most non-lethal methods are implemented by the cooperators. The major difference under Alternative 3 is that Wildlife Services would not conduct operational lethal predator damage management. Under Alternative 4, Wildlife Services would not be involved in any prop predator damage management efforts in Wyoming. Predator damage management would still be implemented by other legally authorized entities, such as Wyoming Game and Fish Department, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, property owners, commercial PDM companies, and private individuals. Entities experiencing damage caused by predators could continue to resolve damage by employing all methods legally available, since the removal of predators to alleviate damage or threats would occur despite the lack of involvement by wildlife services. Wildlife services would not provide assistance with any aspect of managing damage caused by predators in Wyoming, including lethal and non-lethal technical or operational assistance and actions. Requesters would need to seek predator damage management information on existing and new methods, including methods developed and tested by the APHIS National Wildlife Research Center from other sources such as the Wyoming Game and Fish Department, University of Wyoming Extension, services, offices, or pest control companies. Currently, Wyoming Game and Fish Department only provides direct wildlife damage management assistance in limited situations, primarily for trophy game species, but does provide technical assistance and issues depredation permits for such activities as appropriate and within available resources. Requests for predator damage management information directed to wildlife services would be redirected to these entities. Several alternatives were not discussed in detail, such as accepting that livestock losses should be an acceptable cost of doing business, the use of only non-lethal methods, the use of only lethal methods, use of only lethal technical assistance, use of only non-lethal technical assistance, using reasonable non-lethal methods before implementing or recommending lethal operations, using a bounty system for reducing animals causing damage, providing compensation for losses, expecting livestock producers to exceed a threshold of loss before predator damage management actions are taken, using regulated hunting and or trapping to reduce predator damage, live trapping and translocating individual predators causing damage, managing predator populations through the use of reproductive inhibitors, using only non-lead ammunition, conducting short-term suppression of populations with the goal of long-term eradication, conducting supplemental or diversionary feeding, conducting biological control of predator populations, using lithium chloride as a coyote aversion agent, having all losses confirmed by an independent entity, producers avoiding grazing livestock in areas of predator activity and ensuring herders are constantly present, using bear repellents in lieu of lethal bear removal, Livestock producers paying 100% of wildlife services assistance involving lethal removal. Wildlife services prohibited from operating on federal lands. No predator damage management within any designated wilderness areas or wilderness study areas. Wildlife services contracting all predator damage management activities to the commercial sector or deferring all predator damage management activities to Wyoming Game and Fish Department and modifying habitats to reduce predation. Wyoming wildlife advocates sees benefits of many of the alternatives that were not considered by wildlife services, especially exhausting non-lethal controls before lethal action is taken, no predator control on public lands and or in wilderness or wilderness study areas, all losses being confirmed by a neutral entity, use of only non lend ammunition, and producers avoiding grazing livestock in areas of predator activities and ensuring herders are constantly present, which has been proven to work in other ranches. We are disappointed that these alternatives were not considered in this draft EA. You can recommend that Wildlife Services does include these alternatives in their draft EA and seriously consider them as viable options for Wildlife Services work in Wyoming. If we only look at the, at the proposed alternatives 1, 2, and 3 and 4, we would prefer alternative 4 where Wildlife Services would no longer be allowed to operate in Wyoming. The history of Wildlife Services work in Wyoming has been less than exemplary and they continue to kill tens of thousands of our native wildlife each year. 
Wildlife services should be focusing on promoting non-lethal methods of conflict prevention and helping livestock producers to implement those before any consideration of lethal control is contemplated. Wildlife services should not be able to place harmful M44 cyanide canisters anywhere in the state ever again, nor should they permit anyone else to do so. Harmful practices like denning where pups are dug out or harmful chemical smoke cartridges are employed to kill them should be ceased immediately. Using neck snares, foothold traps, body gripping traps, and poisonous chemicals to capture and kill native wildlife should be ceased immediately. The mission of Wildlife Services is to provide federal leadership and expertise in resolving wildlife conflicts to allow people and wildlife to coexist. Until Wildlife Services proves that they can provide the proper leadership to preserve our native carnivores and other animals listed as predators, they should not be allowed to operate in Wyoming. Coexistence can only be achieved using the best available science, cutting edge research and innovative systems being used successfully by other livestock producers in other areas of the country and the world. Wildlife Services continues to rely on outdated, archaic thinking where some animals are a nuisance to be eradicated. If a determination is made through this environmental assessment that the chosen action would have a significant environmental impact, then an environmental impact statement will be prepared. If alternatives one through three are chosen and Wildlife Services operates in the state in any capacity, then significant environmental impact will most certainly occur, which should warrant a full environmental impact statement. The killing of tens of thousands of wildlife can in no way be considered to have no significant environmental impact. Grizzly bears, wolves, foxes, coyotes, jackrabbits, raccoons, skunks, beavers, birds, mountain lions, badgers, black bears, bobcats, porcupines, marmots, and all other animals all have a place in the ecosystem. They all serve valuable ecological services that are nearly impossible to replace. Wildlife are held in the public trust for all citizens, not just one set of citizens. When a grizzly or badger or fox is killed, it is taken away from the enjoyment of anyone to ever see that animal again. We get it, ranching is difficult, but it shouldn't come at the expense of our native wildlife species. There are many, many ranchers in other states and across the world who are using innovative ways to coexist with wildlife on the same landscape. Ran ranchers like Emma LaRoque of Cloudy Ridge Ranch in Alberta, who ranches with both grizzly bears and wolves on her property. Ranchers like Hillary and Malou Anderson and their families who are living and ranching just north of Yellowstone with very small losses to predators and using almost zero lethal control. Ranchers like the Coalition of Producers in the Blackfoot Valley in Montana who are working together to successfully drop grizzly bear conflict 75%. It can be done, but little is being done in Wyoming. Grizzlies and wolves are here to stay, thankfully, but not if we continue to resort to killing when there are conflicts. Bears will be bears and wolves will be wolves. They are trying to survive and feed their families. Humans have the choice to do something differently. We've wiped out species before, and there are those that are still struggling to make a full recovery. When are we going to learn from the mistakes of the past and move toward a new future where all wildlife is treated equally, and what's best for the common good is put above special interests? As a federal agency, Wildlife Services has a mission to serve what is in the best public interest as an agency of democracy, not what is best for just one user group. Until Wildlife Services lives truly up to its name and provides services that benefit wildlife, not livestock, then they should be prohibited from operating in Wyoming. We encourage you to support Alternative 4, which would preclude wildlife services from operating in Wyoming. If you feel that one of the other alternatives best fits the vision you see for wildlife services to operate in Wyoming, please recommend the alternative that you like best. To provide a comment, please click on the button below this link in our newsletter, which will take you to the regulations.gov website where you can provide written comments. Even if you only have time to write a comment stating which alternative you prefer, it all makes a difference. As an engaged citizen, it's your right and responsibility to stand up and speak out. Thank you for being the voice of wildlife in Wyoming.